Good day and welcome to another session of Down the Rehabit Hole with Bill Inspector Steve Nason. Today we want to talk about foam plastics and cladding and see how the code uh, sections apply to the use of either foam plastics or cladding. And again, these sessions are built for only for information only. I encourage you to open up your code book, review that, and if you have any questions or challenges, you can either leave a comment below or you can send me an email. Uh, but I think this will give you a pretty good indication of uh, where we're heading with foam plastics and cladding and try to uh, steer that path in the, in the right compliance, which I think uh, the code will clearly lay it out. Today we're going to look at two buildings. One is uh, classification 32251, combustible and non-combustible building, building construction, and the other one is a 32248, non-combustible building construction. Okay. So we'll, we'll dive into that. And as I say, uh, these buildings will look the same. However, only the inspector can tell them apart or the architect, whoever's involved with it. Okay, 32251, this, this section allows a, the construction to be either of combustible or non-combustible, used singly or in combination of it. So you can use combustible components or non-combustible components within that building construction under three. 2251. Okay, now we dive right into combustible construction section, and you'll find that uh, 3142, protection of foam plastics. When you look at this uh, section, you'll, you'll immediately jump and say, oh, all foam plastics, but that's not the case. This is for adjacent spaces in the building, okay? So that means within the building, uh, not outside, but within the building, all right? And any thermal barrier that meets 3142, 31515, sorry about that. All right, and then oh, I guess I have the appendix that jumps up first, which will tell us that uh, it's adjacent spaces within the building, okay? So uh, that further cements uh, that it's within the building. Okay, so we'll go over here and see what the uh, section two says, because again, with the foam plastics on the inside of the building, We've got A, B, C, D, or E, right? E is a, okay, so if you look at 12.7 millimeter thick chipping board, lab and plaster, masonry, concrete, or a thermal barrier that meets S124, which is basically an intermescent coating on that. So you can have an intermescent coating that meets that standard for the interior of the building. And what this little section here tells us is that the code kind of cleared the, the confusion, tried to clear up the confusion because we had both combustible and foam plastics were in the same article. And they tried to pull that out. Obviously, uh, as we'll go down through this, I don't, I think they missed the mark because there is a section buried deep into the code and we'll go into that, that sort of uh, throws, throws a wrench into things. So. We'll go into that, but it, it basically they've tried to pull us out and put these two together. See, and there, there we go again in the building. The only one I couldn't quite figure out is this blue, bluish uh, box. It says foam insulation is permitted to be used and installed above roof depths, outside foundation walls, below ground level, and beneath the concrete slabs of a building required to be of non-combustible construction. So I don't know where they're coming with that. Is that does that tell us uh, this is only where you can use the foam plastics? I'm not sure. So I'll leave that one for every, so everyone to have a look at. Okay, then we got to look at exterior cladding of a combustible construction, okay? Not less than 90% of exterior cladding on exterior buildings will conform to 50 to 58. So consist of, of non-combustible or, uh, so there you go, or, uh, come on, there we go. Or a, you know, a building that is more than four th conformance to three one five five one bracket B. Okay, so what that tells us, it jumps down to bracket B, and that basically tells us uh, when tested uh, exterior wall assembly. Okay, has to be tested to one thirty four. All right, so you've got that option. So you got non combustible combustible colliding or an assembly that meets the 134 criteria, okay? And then you also have a section with uh, wall assembly that includes 
combustible collider of fire retardant wood that's tested for explosives. Uh, that's on a combustible construction. And uh, the appendix notes tell us that the B is for uh, a performance of wall assembly is assessed with regard to ability for flame propagation off the outside of the building. So that's your unprotected openings and the fire flames are going up the outside of the building. So that's in combustible construction. Now we jump over to the non-combustible construction section. All right. Once again, uh, you know, is everything is non-combustible construction on this one. All right, combustible cladding. Okay, so now what you've got to remember that uh, foam plastic is can be a cladding, but basically, in some cases, it's not. Okay, so you've got foam plastics or foam or whatever you have, and then you have cladding. Sometimes you have a is used as a cladding which is an EFAS system, but most times you've got to kind of differentiate the two, okay? All right, so non-combustible, okay, combustible cladding is permitted to be used on the exterior wall of the building to be of non-combustible construction provided the building is not more than three stories in height or sprinkled throughout and when the wall assembly, the whole sandwich is tested to 134, okay? So that, that tells us in uh, our non-combustible sections. Now this is where you get in here, it says combustible components in exterior walls, 3156. And foam is a combustible component, not a cladding, okay? And so that's in behind, so again is that uh, when you have a EFA system, that may be a cladding, but for this purpose only, we'll say the foam is, is not a cladding, okay? So what it tells us here is that combustible, other than those permitted by Article 31, by, by Article 3155 are, okay, so what we have to do is permitted to be used next to a uh, building that's not more than three stories heights or sprinklered, right? The, the, the wall assembly meets, right? 3155 bracket 1B, okay? So this should be down here. So these, I, I believe these, this section here allows you for minor, minor uh, combustible components. Okay, so I think that's what that's, that section in there tells us. Okay, but if we go down to 3155, 31551B, they talk about, uh, again, that S134 test or protected by uh, concrete or mason cladding not less than 25 millimeters of masonry or concrete cladding. All right. All right, so let's go down to the foam plastics on 31515. Okay, uh, I think that was a oh, 31515. And again, this is the inside of the building, applies to combustible and non combustible buildings again. Uh, and it talks about uh, non combustible construction. So we go into foam plastics with a flame spread ready required with non-combustible provided the insulation is protected, right? So what they'll tell us here is that you got gypsum board, right? Lathe and plaster, masonry, concrete, okay? Uh, oh, I know, and then if you go down to three here, this is a little bit of a, a head scratcher when you say that uh, foam plastic insulation is more than 25, but uh, okay, where do we go here? There it is 18 meters high, okay? A building that is 18 meters high, other than concealed spaces, it talks about in here, building quite a bit, oh, of non-combustible construction that is not sprinklered and more than 18 millimeters high. So that's a bit of a head scratcher for me. And what I looked at and I said, okay, uh, this is a exterior wall is not sprinkled more than 18 meters high, and that's primarily for cold storage and warehouses and assembly buildings. So uh, that that's what that talks about. So again, uh, we'll, uh, I guess this section applied for constructible and non-combustible construction. I just want to point you down to this section here first. Okay, combustible cladding on exterior walls, 3155, and they talk about it has to be not more than three stories, sprinkled throughout, tested to can you, I'll see 134. Okay. And oh, there's these from these are 
that's why this is in here. It is a 322, 310 unprotected openings, right? That's what this is, and 31 low fire load. So that's just a continuation of the uh, chapter. What is a CAN ULCS 124 test? Okay, and that was developed by NRC, and it's fire spring over the ex flame flow of the, the fire plume up through here, fire spread. Okay, so that's what an S134 test is. Okay, now, uh, oops, sorry, I made I made a mistake. Uh, that should have said 124 up here, but anyway, it's an S124 test. So, uh, S1, S130, cheapers. I'm really having a 134. I guess this should have said 134, okay? Because this wall assembly, right, meets the criteria of S134, right? And S134 test, and this should have said 134, okay? But this is a, this is a, a drive it what they call them, a company may drive it and that's an insulation material that's a that's a be an exterior cladding I guess as I said before sometimes you'll have uh, this EFA system but they do have an s134 test which meets the criteria as you can see meets the criteria of 3155 okay let's go down to uh, spatial separation and exposure pr protection Okay, what is a building exposing face uh, and what is a non-protected opening? This could be an exposing building face if it was all one unit, or this could be an exposed building face, okay? So whatever they choose, but most cases, this would be an exposed building face right here because that is a fire compartment, okay? Now you'll see this, and that's a non-protected opening, of course. There you go. Now this could be an exposed building face too right, because this is all one suite, so uh, that could be, uh, and once again, these blue ones here are the unprotected openings, all right, doors, windows, and those type of things. So let's, in this example, we just take a, uh, a suite here that's protected, we've got 10 square meters, just, okay, and we're going to 10 square meters, limiting distance, whatever our distance to our property line or to our imaginary line, and we got 42%, so that's pretty well how that went. So if we drop that down and you'd say you got 20 and you get 16, so this will give you the on the percentage of unprotected openings under that table. Okay, so what you do, then we look at our construction of building, suppose building phase, uh, and then our unprotected 0 to 10, 0 to 25. Okay, and this will give us our wall, a type of construction required, our wall, and the type of cladding required, okay? And the only thing that you got to watch down here, 32250, it says Shelby non-combustible construction, okay? And once again, as you can see, cladding is cladding, uh, so you have to be careful of that. All right, so construction of exposed building face. So what does this article tell us? Okay, it's except for 3148, which it tells us that, that 50 to 58 consist of non-combustible cladding or an assembly to classify 311B, and what is that again? That's our S134 test. Okay, so that shows up there. Okay, and then we go down to four, right? 48, all right, same thing, right? So the only thing that this talks about three is on more than 10% of it is permitted to be waived. Okay, so except for Article 348, the requirement for 347 for non combustible cladding, right? For buildings with fire requirements with a maximum permitted unexpected opening is more than 10% of the exposing phase is per wave for that comply with Article 3155. Okay, so basically, if you have a tested assembly, right, these requirements for this non combustible cladding can be waived if you meet these articles. Okay, so we go back up here. So if it's more than 10%, right, you have a non combustible cladding. And waive that if you have a article that require that is tested to three one five five. Okay, so that's what except, but you don't get a you don't get a, a, a an out of. I don't think you don't get an uh, a get out of jail card because you have to meet except for provided in three one four eight, which tells us that 
50 to 58 consist of not or or tested. So it basically says the same thing, right? So if you have a an EFA system, for example, which is tested at 134, you're good to go. All right. So I guess this kind of tells us in two two planes here that we have to have these tests. So it keeps referring. Okay. So let's just go down to the next one here, except for 3148 again, 50 to 58 or the 134 test, right? Okay. The requirement for non-combustible cladding of buildings or fire covers is a maximum permitted unprotected opening is more than 25%. So if we go down here, more than 25, right? Non-combustible, so we're going to scroll back up here. Fire, uh, fire compartments where the maximum permitted air uh, is more than 20, but not more than 50, the building shall be permitted to be waived where the limiting distance is, okay? So it goes down through all these, but again is that you don't get that out of free jail card until you get, you have a non combustion or test of 134. Okay, so that's the construction of building faces regarding cladding. Okay, all right, so let's go down to number four, uh, and this talks about except for requirement of seven for non combustion where the maximum permitter is more than 20 percent, but not. Not more than 50, the building is a wave where, okay, so, oh, I know what this this tells us again. That's why this green one is here. That's just, this is vinyl siding and this is uh, with furring strips, okay? So that's that's where, say, I, I just duplicated it, but that's what this green box is telling me, okay? So uh, that's what that is. Okay, now here is the smoking gun, I think, in this one. Just a minute now. Yes, it is. So this is this is the one where they kind of you think you're at the finish line, but you're really not. Okay. So if you look at this article, protection of exterior building face. Okay, uh, where the on, uh, permitted area of unprotected is greater than 10% building face, foam, plastic, insulation. Bingo. Foam, plastic, and used on an exterior building wall of three stories in height, more than three stories in height, shall be protected by concrete masonry. Of 25 millimeters thick or a non combustible material tested at CAN S101. Okay? All right. More, okay, so it gains more than three. Okay. So this, this applies to combustible construction and non combustible construction. All right? But within non combustible construction, you gotta, I think you gotta flip down and go back to the non-combustible construction and make sure that uh, meets the clause of B, tested or protected, right? Okay, so once again, is that uh, cladding not meets requirements. So if you go to the 3155, say so it has to have an S134. So this is kind of kind of weird, I would think that because uh, that you got this clause that says you can protect it by a S101 test, and uh, and then if you look in the other uh, sections, and it tells us that you have to have a, a 134 test. So again, I'm not sure where this goes, but I you know, I'll leave that with you folks because if you look at if you who goes just back here, see one back here. Or there we go. That B is a 134 test right there. Okay. So we we'll scroll back up in here and find all that again. We see that it says um, sprinkler N meets the criteria and or protective cladding that's not or con masonry concrete cladding not less than 25 millimeters. Now, one of the questions is why can't I use metal cladding on that exterior wall? Well, you could, I would think, if it's been tested. I, you know, again, is that S130. S101 test, you know, tells us you have to protect the foam, right? And uh, I would say in combustible construction, uh, yeah, you'd have to meet S101, but I haven't seen anywhere where the metal uh, siding has been tested. Okay, so I reached out to the uh, Metal Association of Canada, or whatever they called. I reached out to those folks, but they don't have any testing for that. So again, when you 
looking at combustible construction, it's very clear. It's an S101. In non-combustible construction, it also says S101, right? Uh, when, okay, but again, does that combustible components in the exterior wall preclude that? I don't know, you know, but it's just, uh, it's another head scratcher because do you, do you go, do you move down and say, okay, Regardless of S101, we require an S134. I don't know, but again, is it? I would say that if it's S101, if it's protected, right? Okay, uh, you should, it, it, would, it would be okay. That would be my guess, right? So if you had, let's say you had ICF drywall, then cladding, you've still got that combustible component uh, covered off so it's not it's not no longer an issue I would say that would be it okay so now the other thing is protection I'm just still going down here through the other section if you look at this there is a test criteria that allows you to test the product so for example if buddy wanted to have a his steel siding tested there is a criteria that allows that okay in there all right and Three one five five. What's that? Okay, that again. That tells us about the S one thirty four test. Now um, this one here. This one here, like certainty. Oh yeah, there it is. S one hundred one certified for Canada. So again, that's that sheet rock material over that water resistant sheet rock. Now the only other thing that I thought of is that when I, let's say we had our. Let's just call, okay, there's a continuous insulation right there. We got our water resistance barrier, and then we're gonna put furring strips, okay? So we've got everything all nailed down. So we're, we're, we've got our foam plastics protected, and we're gonna put our cladding on. You gotta watch these concealed spaces as furring strips. I'd, I'd highly recommend you go down through that and see where that applies, because Again, is that you don't want any fire or anything that comes up here and that could travel up the that concealed space behind the siding. So I highly recommend that you read that section and make sure that you're bulletproof in that one. Okay, so a few takeaways in this lesson is watch your classification, building height, your unprotected openings, and watch uh, where you're heading on your various test methods. Because again, right now we've got a couple uh, S101 and 134, and then I think it's 124 for the intermassive material. So you know you kind of you want to look for those things. Uh, you know, just don't assume that the metal over top of the foam plastic protects that. It may do that, but we haven't seen a test result. That's all I'm looking for is uh, that uh, you got to look for those test reports. But that section, uh, the smoking gun, as I call it. Uh, uh, three, two, three, three, two, three, eight. You kind of got to watch that. It'll sneak up on you. Okay. And then watch three, two, three, seven also. So there's a couple of takeaways from this, but again, is that, uh, hopefully this will clear it up. Now I, this issue of, uh, building foam plastics has been going on for a long while. I found a, uh, BC building code interpretation, uh, there, uh, on, on that dating back to 2000. Uh, 17 uh, so you know this issue of foam plastics is quite been quite a headache especially in Atlantic Canada because we are not a concrete or brick or one of those items uh, buildings we are pretty well uh, a we don't use a lot of brick or a lot of brick veneer or those type of things so uh, we do have that exposed foam plastics issue to worry about here in Atlantic Canada. I'm not sure about other areas in Canada, but once again, I'll try to put a link down on below on the uh, BC Building Code interpretation, which sort of uh, reinforces all this. But anyway, uh, hopefully this has been a little bit of a, a session. I know it's a, it's a little bit jumbled, sometimes moving back and forth through the code and trying to get everything right, but hopefully this will give you a little bit of guidance and point you on the right direction as this has been a crazy rabbit hole to go down and try to understand the, the protection of foam plastics. Because again, with the energy codes moving forward, where will the insulation start going? It'll start going outboard. 
Why does he just use foam plastics? And that could be uh, a code board, an ICF, whatever, but that's where we're heading with the outer insulation on. So be careful and watch that so you don't end up with, with a headache, okay? Take care and thank you very much. I've put my uh, email down there. Uh, you can send me an email if you have any questions or concerns regarding this. And have a great day. Thank you very much.